that don't have GoTo. Um, <laughs> I, I think. Um, but uh, basically, if you are, sometimes it's just easier to write in a loop than with recursion, or it's shorter to write in a loop than with recursion. And sometimes it's, um, you are just more used to a specific style. And yeah, in a sharp, you of course then uh, use this for in do loop or for in um, sequence loop. Um, what does this, by the way, mean? Array 0 create 16 um, creates an array of 16 values, um, which are, by the way, uh, 0 indexed. Um, by the way, if you would not know what is below this line, what type would the array have? The compiler tells me it uh, would have at that part an indeterminate type. Um, but because a let binding requires a body and um, this type is used in there, it <laughs> propagates back. So, so because you know here we have an integer, it propagates back to this array zero create. And this is one of the very, very few cases where in F-sharp type propagation goes backwards too. Because typically it doesn't. Just that you know. Because usually um, you would have to write zero create integer something like here. Okay, the zero really relates to the zero-based numbering. Mm -hmm. Sorry, um, there's an array create which takes the elements and the value with which this array is filled, and okay. zero create okay. fills it with zeros. Okay, it's like C malloc. Now, okay, we have an array of sixteen values, and then we have four i in zero point point three point point fifteen do. Zero is the start value. Three is the step amount, and 15 is the inclusive end value. And actually, I didn't know that before, uh, only when I wrote this example, um, because I always expected it to be exclusive. Um, okay, it's inclusive start value and end value and the step size in between. And yeah, so this means this will count 0, 3, 6, 9, up to 15. Uh, which works because we created uh, 16 elements and so the index uh, 15 goes to the 16th element and it exists and so it's okay. If it would not exist, we would get this .NET exception index out of bounds. Um, but yes, it does not know, uh, the type deduction is not that good that it would give you a compile time warning or error for this. So it does not know that it is a 16 items array. Also, arrays are mutable. Uh, I forgot to mention that previously. The list is immutable, the array not. Um, the now we have array is not immutable? Array is not immutable, no. Uh, like you see here, you uh, this, by the way, in a sharp, uh, in, in C sharp, you would just say uh, square open, index square close. In a sharp, this means already list, but you say dot, and then you call the operator function. <laughs> the operator is um, this uh, square part. And then you index this array with E, and this is again our mutating operator. And then we say I plus one times two, and because one and two are integers, we know that I has to be an uh, integer, and because we, um, I is also an integer, and because we uh, take this mutating operator, we know that the type on the left side also must be an integer because F-sharp does no uh, type coercion and so we know that the array that we created must be an array of integers. Okay. Another thing which is of course used very often for element in array or also for element in any kind of sequence. Do. Yeah, that's it. Like for each. Like for each in uh, C-sharp, yes. In C-sharp you would have for each var i in LaFazel. In Java you would have for a uh, bar a um, column, I think, and then the enumerable. Okay, object-oriented it is of course also, because .NET is a primarily object-oriented um, virtual machine, and so it needs to support the um, .NET object uh, system, which is totally different from the OCaml object system, or so I have been told, because I have never actually programmed OCaml. Uh, 
except that I think for one course at the university. Um, but um, yeah, this means every OCaml code which depends on um, the object orientation of OCaml won't compile in a shop. Which should not surprise anybody except those who actually read on a few years, uh, one or two years back at the Microsoft homepage on a sharp, sharp where they said, well, um, F sharp is compatible to a camel. Uh, it isn't. Um, <laughs> but and this is one of the reasons. The object system is different, but it has an object system. And, well, what is the .NET object system? You have interfaces. Interfaces don't have any implementation, they only define virtual functions. Um, this is the syntax for it. You say type, name, equals, and then you say abstract member. And as long as there are only abstract members, it automatically, uh, automatically deduces ifooable to be an interface. So of course you could also write type ifooable is interface with um, abstract member, and this would be the long syntax, but because abstract member on its own is already sufficient to know that this is an interface, we don't need to write out that it is an interface. And yeah, here, by the way, we have um, to write the type of this function. And I didn't go into detail before, but you see, okay, we have uh, basically always when you write types in F sharp, you write the name first, column, and then the type which is exactly the other way around from c -sharp, but I think uh, many other programming languages do it the same way. And in this case we say um, there is an abstract member foo in the type ifool, and this abstract member foo has the type unit projection to unit. And unit is the nothing to nothing. Okay, so this is obviously a function because it's a projection. Now, of course you also have classes. And this is a class which implements my ifooable interface. Type foo. Then, um, this is one way, there are different ways to write classes in F sharp, but we won't go into that today. This type foo message of string. In that case, we have to write this string type explicitly in there. What does this define? This defines a type constructor, uh, it defines the constructor for the type foo. So foo is a type, and if instead of only writing an equal sign beyond that, uh, at the, like in the interface, but we have an argument list here, which by the way must be a tupled argument list. So you need um, opening parentheses, um, argument, um, comma, argument, comma, argument, comma, argument, comma. And here we have one argument with the name message of type screen. And this defines a public constructor uh, which takes one argument of type string and, well, constructs this. But because we do not want, like in C-sharp, where we define a class, and then we define the member variable, and then we define the constructor, and in each of these, uh, in the member uh, variable and in the constructor, we have to um, write out the string. And then in the constructor, we even have to um, set the field, the private field, um, for instance, message, from the constructor variable. Because we don't want to do this, we don't do it, but it still works. Uh, because this part up there uh, behaves like a let binding for all of the type. So this message is available as a let bound variable, immutable, of course, for all of the type. Which is convenient, because this means we can write interface ifooable with. This with, in that case, is a so-called type extension. Okay, we write interface ifooable, so because we implement it, and extend, uh, and because we do not define ifooable, we have to extend this ifooable, and we extend it with the implementation of our foo. And here you see um, something important, member this.foo. And this must, uh, does not need to be this. It could be x, it could be underscore, it could be everything, actually. Um, but what does it do? It um, binds the uh, this pointer to the variable named this. So if you like to write x.foo, then you write x.foo, and you, instead of uh, writing this, you write x. Um, this is actually, most of the people still write this because it's familiar. 
and it's four characters, so it's okay. Um, but what is important? This message um, argument, we, well, because foo only calls printfn uh, to message. This message, you cannot say this dot message. Although if you look at the dot net reflector and uh, look at the intermediate language, you will see that message is indeed a field of uh, this type, a private field, private read only. But um, because message is in this case a uh, let style bound, you must not use this. You can only use uh, this dot something for members, uh, like functions, like member functions, or you can use it for explicit field values, which I haven't even written down there because they are just noisy to write and don't have any advantage. Okay, inheritance, of course, object orientation requires inheritance. Uh, type bar, and then here uh, you see I make a constructor with uh, no arguments, inherit foo with bar. Okay, so this means when I um, call bar foo, then it will always write bar. Yeah, so if I instantiate foo, I have to tell it what it should um, return at the foo. Sorry, I didn't get that part with the constructor. So in the second example, we have a constructor which takes one argument called message mm -hmm. uh, of type stream. Mm -hmm. And if you instantiate a foo, foo in the foo, foo cl class, um, you actually call the constructor immediately with one argument, and this becomes initialized uh, uh, the, yeah. of the object, the attribute message of the instance of foo actually gets instantiated with the parameter supplied to the constructor. Yeah. Okay. So you call a constructor like a normal function. Okay. You do not even need new; it's optional. Mm -hmm. um, and it also behaves like a function with one important uh, restriction, it must be a two-group function. Okay. At least if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, just just so, so that you know, I knew about f -sharp for quite some time, but I'm actively using it only since about half a year. Okay. So, um, so I'm quite okay with things I use every time, but it's not like in C++, which I have 10 years on my back. So um, sometimes I really have a few question marks. <laughs> okay, inheritance is inheritance. .NET inheritance is single implementation inheritance. That's important. You have multiple interface inheritance, single implementation inheritance. Uh, this, the typical reason for this is, uh, well, it's simpler to implement and those people who know C++, know about performance, know about virtual inheritance versus um, static inheritance. Um, or I could just skip the C++ part. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, object expressions. It is possible in Sharp to, um, like in Java, to create uh, anonymous objects uh, which implement an interface. So for instance, if at some place you need to implement an interface which has um, like on next, on, on error, like some iobservable in .NET, you would not need to create your own type with all this uh, uh, stuff. But instead, if you know you just really want to plug into it, then you just write an object expression, which then starts with new, so that it knows it's an object expression. Then the type. In that case, we only override object, the two string, but it could, for instance, be an interface. And then the syntax is totally the same as if you would write um, um, a class. So it's the same with um, if you have an interface, you say member this dot foo. If you have an um, object already implements two string, which is a virtual function, so you have to override the virtual function, not um, define a member, a new one. So you write override. And that's it. Um, ha. I said, the, uh, Flav does not do any type coercions, even if they are safe. It also, if even if the sty uh, type is statically known to implement an interface, you have to explicitly cast 
to the interface to call functions 